Good morning and welcome. Today's Chumash for the Sunday, the beginning of the portion of Lech Lecha. Chapter 12, verse 1, in the book which we use here, page 100. Vayomer Hashem el Avram. And God says to Avram, to Abraham, Lech Lecha, go, or go you, leave. Me'artzecha, depart your land, umi me'ladetecha, your place of birth, umi beis avicha, and your father's house, el ha'oretz, and go and journey to the land, asher areka, which I will show you. And geographically, Abraham, Avram, was born in Mesopotamia, in Iraq. He and his father and their family left Iraq, and went to Choron, Syria. And then Hashem appears to Avram, as we will learn, when he's 75 years old. And he says, it's time to leave and go to the place where I will show you, referring to Canaan or Israel. Rashi, verse 1 Lech lecha, what would be the problem, Rashi says, if it would only say lech, what is the benefit of lech lecha? The answer is lahana oscha, because it's for your own good. O lehtevoscha, it's to your own advantage, because you will benefit from this journey. You know, people don't like to move, especially when they're 75 years old. So Hashem says, this will turn out to be a great thing for you. Visham, because there, e'escha, I will make you, legoi godel, into a great nation. Why? Because, remember, Avraham is childless at this point in time. Avraham and his wife Sarai did not merit to have any children. Khan, here, as long as you live here in Choron, i atazeicha lebonim, you don't merit to have children. There's the principle in a theological principle, Mishana Moko, Mishana Mazel, Litova Velivracha. When somebody changes his place, he changes his Mazel, his luck, for goodness and blessing, especially when one moves from the diaspora to Israel. So your Mazel doesn't have children in it for you, but when you will move, you will. Even though it took him quite a while. Took him 25 years. V'yed, and furthermore, she'edia tivecha ba'elam. The world will know who you are. Even ask ourselves today, so many years later, who is one of the most famous people in history? Abraham. There's, there are very few people as famous as Abraham. And that's been, it's been quite a while. The beginning here is what we call uh, Balaturim heavy. Vayomer is the first word in this portion. He begins with the word Vayomer, reminiscent of the expressions in creation. Like Vayomer Elohim Yehior, God said, let there be light. Vayomer, Vayomer, the Asoro Ma'amarot, the ten utterances of creation. Being that the world was created with ten Vayomers, ten Ma'amarot, and the entire world was created in the merit of Abraham. There's a verse in the very beginning of the Chumash. Ele toldot hashamayim v'ha'oretz. These are the generations, the story of heaven and earth. Bihi borom, when he created them. So every, all the commentaries say, Bihi borom, bi avraham. Bihi borom has the letters of the avraham that in the Merit of Avram, who was going to bring godliness to the world, God created the world. So therefore, with that in mind, the beginning of the commandment to Avram is also Vayomer, reminiscent of the ten utterances of creation. Lech Lecha, if you take the numerical value of the words Lech Lecha, Lamed is 30, Chaf is 20, that's 50 twice, Lech Lecha, that's 100. This is an illusion. That when you will be 100, 
then I will make you a great nation because your son Yitzchak will be born. Abraham was circumcised at the age of 99 and his son Yitzchak, which was the beginning of the generations to come, was born when he was 100. Another interpretation is that when he leaves here at the age of 75, because that's how old he was as we learn, he will live after that another 100 years. Why? Because how old was Abraham when he died? 175. That's another illusion in the words lech lecho. Another interpretation, lech lecho. Why a double expression of going, of leaving? The Jewish people would leave Israel twice. There was the exile following the destruction of the first holy temple. The churban Beis Hamikdash Harishon, the Babylonian exile. Then there was the second exile, the destruction of the second Beis Hamikdash, the Roman exile. Lech lecha, your children will be exiled out of Israel twice. Another interpretation: the word lech is fifty. That after fifty generations, your children will leave Israel in the days of Tzitkiyahu, the king. That was the exile of the Jewish people from Israel. Okay. Verse 2. So Hashem says to him, And I promise you, I, I, I represent to you, I do declare, I will make you, I will transform you into a great nation. You, this one person, will become a great nation, the Jewish people. And I will bless you. And make your name great. And you will be a blessing. Them are powerful words. Rashi tells us why these blessings. The Two in Rashi. The reason God gave Abraham these blessings is the fee because... When somebody travels, when somebody is a wanderer, they travel. Remember, if you can picture a world without cell phones, without blackberries, so you really lose your identity. And you can't keep touch. And you can't build a business. And you can't build a company. And you can't do anything. can't build a family. You're a wanderer. Because journeying, traveling, causes naturally a reduction in three components of life. Number one, the natural course of life is when people are wanderers, they can't build families. People don't have children when they're wandering. Number two, people's fortunes are decreased. When they're traveling, they can't focus on building a business. Number three, you can't build a reputation. By the way, interestingly enough, all these three things were changed in, with modern technology. But once upon a time, there was no modern technology. Like my grandkids say, Zaydi, you're from the olden days, right? Of course I'm from the olden days. I was born in the last century. Lakach, therefore, huskak. Abraham required these three blessings. Hashem said, I will make you great. You'll have children. You'll make a lot of money. And you will become renowned throughout the world. And we can go a step further and say, throughout history. Hashem promised him about children. And money. And reputation. There's an interesting question that is asked. Abraham was a tzaddik. He was a righteous person. He was not concerned with his reputation. He was not concerned with his ego. Why are we so concerned? Why is Hashem so concerned? If he was a humble, righteous person, who cares? The answer is, Abraham was, in fact, as the Kabbalah describes him, a chariot to God. He didn't exist as an individual. Therefore, his reputation is God's reputation. And that concerned him. And I will bless you. Simply the blessing of Yivorechecha is a financial blessing. We say something similar with Birchat Kohanim. 
the blessing of the Kohen, Yivarechecha, Hashem, may God bless you. The commentaries say, Rashi brings down, Bimomen, it's a financial blessing. Veheye brocha, you shall be a blessing. Habrocha is nesuna is biodecha, you were given the power to bless. And in simple terms, this is the gift that God gave to tzaddikim, a tzaddik, a righteous person, his blessings are fulfilled. That's why people want righteous people to bless them. Furthermore, in a sense, the amech kulam tzaddikim, every Jew is referred to in that verse as a tzaddik. We should always bless everyone. We should always extend blessings. Ad achshav hoyabiyodi. Hashem goes on to say, God Almighty goes on to say, up to now, the blessings were in my hands. Beirachti, I, God blessed Le'odom. It says, God blessed Adam. V'noach, I blessed Noach. O'me'achsha, but from now on, Hashem says to Abraham, you become enabled to give blessings. You become the Baal Habroches. Tevorech es asher You will bless everyone that you desire to bless. Bless, bless, bless. The blessing of a tzaddik is a very powerful thing. Dover Achar, another interpretation, Ve'eschal the Goigodol, is when it says, I will transform you into a great nation. It's much more than just that which we talked about above. Zesha Emrim, that's what we say to this day in the Amidah. We begin three times a day the Amidah, the prayers, Elokei Avram, so that millions of Jews. Pray three times a day, God of Abraham. Vavorechecha, and I will bless you. You'll have nachas. Zeshaim, Melekei Yitzchak, the God of Yitzchak, Abraham's son. Vagad Loshmecha, I'll make your name great. Zeshaim, Melekei Yaakov, the God of Jacob. So here we have the three patriarchs Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Yochel, I would think that they're all equal, Pasqual. That Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob are all equal? No, not really. Yuchesmin bekulam, I would think that the conclusion of that blessing is Baruch Ato Hashem, Magain Avraham Yitzchak Yaakov. Blessed are you, God, the shield of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? No. Talmud Leimavehaye Bracha, you shall be a blessing. Bechachesmin Belaibahem. The end of the blessing is with your name, Mogain Avraham, the shield of Abraham, not Isaac and not Jacob. So despite the fact that there were three patriarchs. And in a sense, you can argue that as you go down the line, they become greater. Because we find that the Jewish people are called B'nai Yisrael, Yaakov. Nevertheless, Mogain Avraham, the initial blessing remains the greatest blessing, and that is Abraham. Abraham is the father of the Jewish people. What do you mean that God stands, so to speak, in Syria, in Choron, and says to Abraham, leave your birthplace, Mesopotamia? He already left. Imoviv with his father, Terach, and the whole family left Mesopotamia and moved to Choron. Ovoat Choron. This is the meaning. Go even further away from your birthplace. And leave your family. Go to the place where I will show you to go. Ambiguous. Why is God being ambiguous? Why doesn't he just tell him? Come to Israel, be with friends. Like Gilala, he didn't reveal to him Esaoretz, the land where he's going, his destination, Miyad, immediately, in order to make it more beloved in his eyes. Because it's like I'm going to send you to a surprise destination. Furthermore, there's a greater reward when somebody follows the command, which is vague. When God gave him the command for the sacrifice of Isaac, he first told him, your son. Abraham says, which son? I've got two sons. He says, your only son. He says, I've got two only sons. <laughs> That's a real Jewish answer. The one that you love, he says, I love them both. 
an even more Jewish answer. He says, "Es Yitzchak, I mean Yitzchak. Oh, Yitzchak. Kayetzebe, bring him al Horem to one of the mountains. Asherim Lecha. Doesn't tell him which mountain. Or like God said to Jonah when He sent Jonah to Nineveh, also Iraq, to tell the people of Nineveh He's going to overturn their land because of their immense sin. He said, Ukro Eleho Esakriya, and proclaimed the proclamation to them peoples. So Jonah said, Which proclamation? Asher Anechi David Elecha, the one I'm going to tell you. Again, that's the vague commandment, but Jonah was born yesterday. Jonah says, I'm out of here. I know what God's going to do. He's going to forgive them, and then what's going to happen to my reputation? As we know from the reading of the Maftir Yonah on Yom Kippur. Okay, looking back in Balaturim, the Balaturim says, the Es Chalagay Godel, he blessed him here with seven blessings, and the Balaturim goes on to enumerate the, seventh bless, the seven blessings. The Es Chalagay Godel, you have three components here. I will make you into a great nation, that's one. I will bless you, and make your name great. These correspond to the three blessings of the Birchas Kohanim. The Birchas Kohanim, the priestly blessing, is divided into three verses. Yivorechecha Hashem b'yishmerecha is one. Yoer Hashem pona b'elecha b'chunecha is two. Yisro Hashem pona b'elecha b'yosim l'chosholim is three. Also, the word mivorechecha has three crowns on the chof. Chof, the numerical value of chof is 20. Three times 20 is 60, corresponding to the 60 letters in the section of the priestly blessings. The Birchas Kornim has 60 letters. Furthermore, excuse me, the Balaturim here says, Vavorechecha has the numerical value of Avroham. That Vavorechecha refers to Avroham. Okay, verse 3. Va'al, did we learn three already? Va'avorcha mivorachecha. I will bless those who bless you. God says to Abraham, anyone who blesses you, I'm going to bless them. O mekalelcha, and those who curse you, or I will curse. Ve'nivrechu becha, keel mishpecha yisa adama. All the families of earth, on earth, will be blessed through you. People will say, I give you my blessing, you should grow up to be like the kid next door, like Goldstein. The Hashem says, I give you the blessing. It's like we say that Yisimcha Lekim Kefrayim Umanasha is the Friday night blessing. May God, we say to our children, may God make you like Joseph's children, Ephraim and Manasha. Abraham had that blessing. People bless their children. They should succeed like Abraham's children. Verse 3 in Rashi. V'nivrechu Yesh agodes rabbis. There are many Midrashic interpretations on this verse. V'zeo pshute, but this is the simple interpretation. Odom oimer levnoi. A person says to his son, Teheicha Avram, may you grow up to be like Abraham. V'chein kol v'nivrechu b'cha shebimika. So also, everywhere it says v'nivrechu b'cha in the verse, means that people will say you should grow up to be like this and this person. And the proof is, as I just mentioned in the oral introduction to this Rashi, Through you, the Jewish people will bless their children, saying, May God make you like Ephraim and Menashe. Verse 4. Ayelech Avram and Abraham journeyed. Kasha Diber Elam Hashem as God spoke to him. Ayelech Itelait. And along with Abraham went his nephew Lot. Who was Lot? Lot was the son of Abraham's brother, Haran. We learned earlier in Rashi, yesterday in Rashi, that Haran had died in Nimrod's furnace. So Lot accepted Abraham as a replacement for his father image, so to speak. 
So Lot followed his uncle. The Avram ben Chomei Shona b'Shivim Shona b'Tzeise Mecharon. Abraham was at that time seventy-five years old when he left Choron. These are one of the chronological markers of the Torah. There's a whole system of Torah and chronology. We have markers. This is one of the verses that are a marker. It says he was 75 years old. So that establishes so much fact. Verse 5. So, Abraham took his Sorai Ishta, his wife Sorai. At that time, Abraham's, wife, Abraham's name was still Avram. It was Abram. At that time, Sarah's name was still Sarai. God changed both their names later, adding a hey to Avram and replacing the Yud with a hey to Sarah. We have Lot ben Ochev and Lot the nephew, we have Kodah Chushim and all of their wealth, Asher Ochoshu, which they acquired, we have Hanefesh and all of the souls, Asher Osu Bechoron, which they had gotten in Choron. So he took all of his wealth and all of his fortune and all of his people, by Yetzu, and they went forth. On a journey, Lalech is heading to Arza Canaan, the land of Canaan, by Yavayu, and they arrived, Arza Canaan, to the land of Canaan. Asher Osu Bechoron. What kind of souls did they acquire in Choron? Who are we talking about? So Rashi brings down two interpretations. The first is the spiritual interpretation. You see, wherever Abraham went, he was working. What was he doing? He was publicizing monotheism. He was teaching the world about God. Abraham was born into a dark, pagan, idolatrous world. Abraham's father, Terach, was an import-exporter of idols. The biggest around, idolsareus.com. Abraham got thrown into Nimrod's furnace because he destroyed his father's idol store. And wherever he, want, wherever he went, he said, there must be a God. The world is not here on its own. As I often love to quote the story that I heard from Rabbi Emmanuel Shochat, the story of the man who was taken on a tour to deep, deep dark Africa, and he was taken into a cave and he was told we're going to explore this cave at a depth that no one has ever explored before. And they went into the depths of the cave and there shining his flashlight he saw something shiny and he picked it up and lo and behold what does he find? A Timex watch. Wow! No one has ever been here before. A Timex watch. So he says to the tour guide, ha, 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 ha. no one has ever been here before. Look, my watch says Timex. So Abraham said to the people of his generation, watch, watchmaker, when you find a watch, the logical conclusion is there is a watchmaker, Timex, takes a licking and keeps on ticking. World, world maker. If there is a world, there has to be a creator who created the world. If the world evolved, then why can't the watch evolve? And that was Abraham's mission in life. He went around speaking about world, world maker. And he carried the Timex watch with him. I'm not making this up, it's in the Bible. So Rashi says, as Red Button says, He caused all these people to enter under the, wing, under the wings of the, of the Divine Presence. Abraham would bring the men to monotheism. And Sarah would, he uses the word here, convert, but there wasn't, it was conversion from paganism to monotheism, to believe in one God. And the Torah considers it as if he created them. Abraham preached one God. Therefore it says, which they had made. 
Pshute shal mikra and the simple meaning avodim u'shvacha slaves and handmaids shekano lahem which they acquired kime osa es kol akava dazeh who made all this honor v'yisrael es chayyul l'shem kainu v'chaynus the souls which he acquired in the simple terms are his slaves it was a world of slavery. On the lighter side, speaking of the one God, there's a, an adorable story they tell of a of a uh, about atheist who was very proud of being uh, an atheist and, and not believing in God, who had a very bright son, and uh, he sent his son to the best school in the neighborhood. Turned out to be a, a Catholic school. Anyway, as the joke goes, the kid comes home, and he says, Pop, you know what we learned about today? We learned about the Trinity. We learned about the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. There are three gods, not one God. The father takes the kid, smacks him across the face. He says, listen to me and listen good. There is one God and we don't believe in him. <laughs> Verse, that's a joke by the way. Verse 6, Vayaver Avraham Boretz and Avraham crossed, crisscrossed the land. Ad mekeim Shechem, coming to Shechem. Ad Elon more coming to the plains of Moreh, the Haknan, and the Canaanite was then in the land. Very important verse. Rashi, Vayaber, Avram, Ba'oretz, Nichnes, Lesecha, he entered into it. Ad Mikhaim, Shechem, Lispalo, to pray, Abne Yaakov, for the sons of Jacob. Kishi, Yavayu, Lilochem, Bishchem. Abraham was a prophet. He knew the future. In the future, Shimon and Levi would take on a whole city of Shechem. He prayed that they should succeed. Elon Mora, the plains of Mora Ishchem. Hero, he showed him Har Grizim, Bahar Abel, Mount Grizim and Mount Abel, where the Jewish people accepted the oaths, the curses, the blessings. Shasham Kibli Yisrael, Shavuos HaTorah, where the Jewish people accepted the oath of the Torah. Why did I say before this is a very important verse? Because Rashi tells us that the Canaanite was first, then in the land. Why? Because as we see the division of the land, God gave Israel, or Canaan, to Shem. Not to Canaan, who was a son of Chum. So how did the Canaanites acquire Canaan? Through war. They went and declared war against the Semites, and occupied it, and took it. So the entire inception of the Canaanite country was the result of an invasion. It's not that the Canaanites were born in Canaan. After the flood, the beginning of civilization, God gave Israel to the Semites. It says, Malki Tzedek, Melech Sholem, Heitzi Lechem Boyoyin. That Malki Tzedek, king of Sholem, we're going to learn, Malki Tzedek is shame, and Sholem is Yerushalayim, Yerushalayim. But the Canaanites came and fought and forcibly conquered Canaan. Shebechel Kishel Shem Nofla. It fell into Shem's portion. Kishechilak Noach Esaras Levona. When Noach divided the land. Shenemar, as it says, Umalki Tzedek Melech Sholem. In general, in the Torah, it doesn't say in the Chumash, the word Yerushalayim anywhere. It always refers to Jerusalem as the place that God will choose. Hamakom asher yivchar Hashem. What does it say? It says Yira, Hashem Yira, or Sholem. Yira, Sholem is Yerushalayim. Lefikach, therefore, Vayemer Hashem al Avram. God said to Avram, Lezar Acha et and Asaretz Hazais. You see this land that the Canaanites are now. Canaan was the fourth son of Chum. The Canaanites are now taking forcibly Osidani Lahachzira. I will return it. So for all those who ask a question later, why did God take away the land from the Canaanites and give it to the Israelites? The answer is he was restoring that which belonged to Abraham. Levanecha, shehem mizari shoshem, because they are Semites, because Abraham is a Semite. Abraham is a descendant of shame. Verse 7, Vayera Hashem el Avram, and God appeared to Abraham, 
Vayomer, and he said, Lizarachal et enesorat sazais to your descendants, I will give this land. Vayimin shom isbeach, and Abraham built an altar to thank God. Vashem hanido, he loved to God who appeared to him. Rashi, vayimin shom isbeach, al besedas hazera, for the good news that number one, he's going to have children, because he was, he was barren, he was childless. And number two, al besedas eretz Yisrael, for the news that his children will be given eretz Yisrael, Israel. Eight Vayatek Mishomahora from there he moved to the mountain. Mikedem le Basel, east of Bethel, Vayet Oholoy, and he pitched his tent. Basel, Miyom Bio Ay Mikedem. Basel was to the west, and I was to the east. Vayim Shom is Bayak Lashem, and he built an altar there to Hashem. Vayikra Bashem Hashem, and he called in the name of Hashem. Vayatek Misham Ohole Rashi, Mikedem le Basel, Bim Israel Shal Basel, east of Basel. Nimtz is Basel, but Marobi, so Basel was on his west. Hushanemer Basel, Miyom, Basel to the west. Oholoi, Oholoksiv. Batchilonotas Eil Ishtai. The writing is her tent. He first pitched his wife's tent. This teaches us that a man should always care for his wife and concern himself with her needs before his own needs. Viachakacha Shalei, and then his needs. Vayibin Shom is Beach, Nisnabe. This was a prophetic statement. Shasidin Bonabli Koshal Shom, that his sons. His descendants will stumble there. Alavain Ochan concerning the sin of idolatry of Ochan in the future. Vispal Shamalem, and he prayed for them there. Verse 9. Vayisa Avram, and Abraham journeyed. Holech Venaseya Hanegba, he kept going south. Rashi Holech Venaseya Leprokim intermittently. Yeshev Khan Chedisha Yeser, he stayed in every place a month or so. And I say, Amisham, and then he uprooted from there, journeyed from there, and they in pitching his tent, and he kept journeying to the south. Lolech has to go, the Dreyma to the south, towards Jerusalem. Shehu Bechelke Shel Yehuda, which is in the territory of Judea. Shehnot Lehu took, the Dreyma Shel Eretz Yisrael, the south of Israel, the Haram Eriah to Mount Maria, Shehnachalotse, which is his inheritance. We learned the Hayom Yom. The Hayom Yom tells us in this time that on this verse, Vayisa Avram Holech Venaseya Hanegba, that from here we learn the Avodas Habirurim, that every single person has a mission to do, a mission given by God Almighty, where he has godly sparks that may exist in one place or another. And he has to journey to that place in order to accomplish whatever he has to accomplish in that place, to speak to someone, to inspire someone, to make a blessing, to pray, to give charity, just to be there. A tzaddik knows where his sparks are, so a tzaddik picks up and just goes. But the regular people, like us, we don't know where our divine sparks are. Therefore, the everyday acts of life take us to different places. We have a business trip, we have a bar mitzvah, a wedding, a vacation, and all of these journeys take us where we're supposed to be. As the famous teaching goes, where we go is determined by God. What we do when we get there is up to us. And that's the idea of holoch v'naseya hanegba. Okay, Jack. Verse 10, I guess. Now we get into the next story. This is considered one of the great tests of Abraham. Just as God says to Abraham, I want you to go to a particular country where you're going to get blessing, he gets there and suddenly a famine breaks out. This is why you brought me here, so I should starve. By a heat of a famine broke out in the land. There was no choice, there was no food. So Abraham did what everybody did. He went looking for food. Egypt had food. Abraham descended down to Egypt. To dwell there. Because the famine was very heavy in the land of Israel. He had no choice. Only in that land the famine was. It was a test. Whether he's going to ask questions about God, why did you do this to me? 
Shomar lei told him lalechas alatz Canaan. Hashem told him to go to the land of Canaan. The achshav masiye or masiye lotzis mimenu. And now God is telling him to leave simply to eat. Now we know that back then there was no country as decadent as Egypt, and the custom was that whenever someone would come to Egypt, if that group had within it a beautiful woman. The woman would be taken to Pharaoh's palace and he would have his way with her. And that's just the way it was. Nothing you could do about it. Eleven, Vayehi, it came to pass, Kasher Hikriv, Lovey, Mitzrayim, as they approached close to the Egyptian border. So Abraham said to his wife, Sarai, Hine no Yodati, listen up, listen, dear, I know. That you are a beautiful woman. And I'm concerned about you. Because the Egyptians are going to take you. But you know what they're going to do to me? You, they'll take. Me, they're going to kill. And that can ruin my whole day. Rashi, he ne no yadati. Medrash agoda, the Medrash says, Ad achshav lehikirbo. Abraham was such a tzaddik that he never thoroughly gazed at his wife to recognize how beautiful she was. We read about when Sarah dies, it says, that in her older age, she was as beautiful as she was in her youth. She was an incredibly beautiful woman. But now, he had to have a good look at her because he was concerned. Because of this story. Davar another interpretation. Journeying doesn't usually help a person's looks. You know, you get away from your beauty parlor and so on. Minega elam, it is the custom of the world, that through the trouble of travel, or the mizbaza, a person becomes farmiest. A person loses that neat look. Vizais, but this woman... Amda biyofya, she retained her beauty, and therefore that was cause for concern. Upshute shamikra, the simple meaning, he ne no higiyasha, the time has arrived, sheyesh lideg, where it's necessary to worry, al yofya, because of your beauty. Yadat is a yamim rabim. I know this, it's nothing new, ki yafas marat, that you are exceedingly beautiful. But the achshav now, on a boy, and we're coming. We're coming amongst ugly people. We're coming amongst decadent people. They are the brothers of Kushim. We know that Chom, who was Noah's wicked son, had four sons. Kush, uh, Put, Mitzrayim, Kush, Put, and Canaan. So the Mitzrayim were like the Kushites. They had very bad morals. And suddenly they see a beautiful woman. What do they do? They rape her. The day Malay, we find something similar. Behold my master, turn aside, and so on. So therefore, Abraham was very concerned that not only will they take her, but they'll kill him. So what do we do? We read in the next verse that Abraham says... He actually says he's afraid that they're going to take her and kill him. So he comes up with a brilliant idea. Why don't you say you're my sister? Because if you're my wife, what do you do? You kill the husband. If I'm your brother, what you do is you give the brother a lot of presents. And I like presents. So why don't you just say I'm your brother and everything will be good? So obviously the question is, who, who conducts themselves like that? Here you're talking about Sarah entering into a place of immorality and lawlessness and, and the rule of kings and decadence and who knows what. And Abraham's only concerned about himself. They're going to kill me, so don't say I'm the husband, say I'm the brother, so they're going to give me a lot of video games. They're going to give me a lot of sheep and cattle. No, and what about her? It's not nice. Who conducts themselves that way? So I want to explain that the simple...
perspective, at least that which I always understood, is that Abraham was an unusually righteous and great man. He was what we call a great tzaddik. Obviously. Sarah was a great tzaddikus or tzitkonius. She was a righteous woman. Sarah was a prophetess. Abraham was a prophet. These are the greatest, the patriarchs and the matriarchs. But because of his greatness, he was also very humble. And just as we find two generations later, with Yaakov, with Jacob, when Esau is about to kill him, because he's coming with 400 men, 400 terrorists, armed to the teeth. What does Yaakov say? Kotonti mikol hachsodim, or mikol ho'emes, I feel very small because of all the kindness that you've shown to me. Rashi explains, nismatu zechoyosai, I feel that my merits have all been cashed out. Good deeds are like deposits in the bank. You deposit, and then when you need help from God, you withdraw. Says Jacob, I feel overdrawn. I've had too much goodness. I went down to Lovon all alone, and now I have a big family and wealth. I'm, I'm afraid I'm spiritually overdrawn. Abraham also felt humble. He didn't see himself for the great person that he was. Therefore, he didn't know if he would merit the miracle. Therefore, he was concerned about himself. His wife? Humility doesn't affect the way a man sees his wife. He saw her for who she was. Great. He had not one iota of concern for her. He knew that Hashem would protect her, as he did. A miracle happened. There wasn't a question. He wasn't sure the miracle would happen to him. And therefore, he says, we're not concerned about you. You're going to be okay, but me, they're going to kill me because I don't have enough merit. She played along because she wasn't concerned either. That's the simple perspective, at least where I come from. Now let's learn 12. It shall come to pass. And when the Egyptians will see you, and they'll say, this is his wife. And they'll kill me, because that's what you do. You kill the husband. And you, they'll keep alive. Therefore, I beg of you, please say, you're my sister. Not only won't they kill me, but they're going to give me a lot of gifts. So that you will save my life. Again, we're not concerned about you, because you are Sora the prophetess. They're going to give me gifts. And the Zohar brings down from here that this is a biblical source from which we learn the important teaching that a man's economic blessings come in merit of his wife. That if a man has a righteous wife, he has economic blessings. Abraham said, my economic welfare is because of you, Sarah. Therefore, in your merit, they will give me gifts. God promised me wealth. I know it's from your merit. That's what the Zohar says. End of today's Chumash portion. <laughs>